Hello everybody, I'm Antonia and this is Noel and we are from Boxtail Soup Theatre Company and this is another one of our weekly box tail scoops. I forgot the first episode. I feel like you're trying to catch me out. Well, by saying weekly, yeah, sorry. Uh, we are going to do a brief-ish vlog today. Oh, I realise though I'm supposed to say the thing about liking yeah, if Sorry. you've been watching these videos and enjoying them, please do give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, or possibly even subscribe. That'd be great. There we are. Uh, it, like I said, it's going to be a briefish video today because we are filming this weekend. So from tomorrow to Monday, we will be filming three music videos. So it's going to be quite tight. Um, but that's what we've been working towards these last few weeks. So that's all the stuff that we've been showing you. Most of that is for these videos. It's for a band that we really love. We love their music. So we're very excited about it. I think it's going to be quite a lot of fun. Uh, one of the things that we made for the videos is behind us here. And we thought we'd focus on these today as Noel uh, had to do quite a, well, it's quite an ingenious, in my opinion, mechanism to make them work. So they are, you can probably tell, a pair of rainbow wings. They're to go uh, on the, they're for a particular moment in the video. And I think Noel's going to try and explain how to make them because I yeah. think you really probably could make them with mostly stuff that you'd find around your house. Oh yeah, for sure, yeah. Uh, the only thing you might have to go and buy is a box of uh, uh, split pins, paper fasteners or whatever. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff that we we haven't been able to show you. And uh, there's a few things. So this, this, this set of wings, in fact, is for a puppet that we're still kind of keeping under wraps until we know that we've finished the videos and the band are happy for us to to share the puppet with everyone. So this, these wings are in fact designed to go onto that puppet. Um, what I wanted uh, was, and the idea from the beginning really, when we, when we came up with the idea for that bit of the story, was that these rainbow wings should sort of unfurl and open, which is all well and good when you're coming up with ideas. When you then come to make it, that's when you start kicking yourself and go, why did we write that? However, um, I mean, thank you for saying it's ingenious, but I can't really take very much of the credit in terms of the the actual design itself, uh, insofar as how the wings open. Um, it's quite a common design. It's like a, a, a dual cantilevered thing. So when they open, I'll just show you. I'll stop waffling and show you what I mean. So they open like this. And then what I particularly like about it is that I managed to get the feathers to spread out once the wings are open. You're right there, you got it, yeah? Yeah. Cool. Sometimes they need a little jiggle to uh, get them to close. That won't be a problem because they don't have to close on camera, but we'll come to that in just a second. Maybe if we turn them around. So yeah, I was just going to say, if we turn them around. The the mechanism. Yeah. So it's really quite straightforward. Um, sorry, I just trying to make sure I can see what I'm uh, what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. You've got these two. You've got two pairs basically, two pairs of of, um, of bars. So when one of them opens, sorry, got it. You got it. Yep. It works as like a scissoring motion, and that's what allows them to sort of stay rigid, and for this one to be extended because it's it's also held in place at the bottom by this lower bar here. They've got numbers on the backs of them and I'm assuming those are measurements. Did you yes, have to make are. sure that they were, in order for it to unfurl the way it does, do you have to make sure that it's a certain ratio? Uh, no, it's not really a ratio. I mean, in fact, I, I looked at various different examples of, of different applications of this mechanism online and, and I, I was just trying to pick um, it was really to remind me what length was what. So I was trying different lengths to see what effect it had. So if I, you know, if I made this one a little bit longer, what effect does that have? And it means that this part of the wing raises higher. So I, I fiddled around with a few of them until I found um, measurements that I was happy with, basically. So here and there, I, I might be sort of cutting a millimeter off. And this was when I was making it in cardboard. So I could just poke, it, poke another hole in it without even cutting it shorter but I knew what the measurement between those two holes was, so I could sort of experiment with which one gave the nicest, um, the nicest opening movement. So if somebody wanted to have a go in cardboard, let's say like a, a, you know, a pizza box or a, 
cereal box to have a go at the idea of this cantilever system, mm. where would they start? Uh, I guess you could... So a great resource generally for this kind of thing would be cosplayers. Um, if you know what I mean by that, people who, who make costumes from movies or TV series or video games. Comic books or whatever. Or comic books, yeah. And they, I mean, some of them make the most beautiful, incredibly detailed stuff. Really is mind-blowing, some of it. Um, so in a lot of cases where costumes have got wings, they're using a similar sort of system to this. Actually, Jimmy Grimes has been posting some lovely stuff recently. Um, what's his Instagram, is it? I think it's just at Jimmy Grimes. Jimmy Grimes, uh, so Brunskling Grimes and Jimmy Grimes, they again, they, they are puppet makers, they make some beautiful stuff. And he actually has been posting recently quite a few different applications of this kind of system. He's also been making animal legs. Oh yeah, so yeah. Yeah, so same sort of thing. And then he's made a couple of wings as well. Well, that was pure coincidence, actually. He, um, he posted a couple of those and it was a couple of days after I'd finished uh, making Figuring a prototype that, for this, so I was like, why, why couldn't that have happened a couple of days earlier? Um, so, yeah, that would be a good place to start if you wanted to give it a try. The tricky part, really, after that, was trying to figure out how to get the feathers to spread when the wing actually opened. And as you can see, all I've done, in fact, on the back is this feather at the end here is fixed in position. And the idea was that when the wing's at rest, that, that one does have a slight outward curve, but because the ring, wing is relaxed, you wouldn't really, you know, you wouldn't really notice. But when they are then raised, the little bits of string, I mean, it's all very low tech, it's just attached with string and, and gaffer tape. The little bits of string are connected to each feather and each feather is hinged at the top with a split pin. So each feather can rotate freely. Um, and what that means is that when you then pull it out, because the string is also anchored to the center piece in the body here, the string will only stretch so far, and it means because it's connected to this one at the end, that then stretches out all of the other um, feathers and spreads them out nicely. And then obviously when you, when you then relax that wing, because they can move freely, they just sort of drop back into place and the string becomes loose again. So really, really very simple. Um, I think the only other sort of things worth mentioning about it in terms of the design are that we, um, we noticed that when they're behind the puppet, although the puppet is reasonably large and it's a human shaped puppet, so a lot of this is hidden by his shoulders, but we noticed that when they were open, some of this um, foam board, which is what it's made from, the, the struts are made from foam board, some of it was visible, so we just covered that with a card, a purple card that was the same sort of colour as some of the feathers, so that it wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't draw your eye, it wouldn't be kind of incongruously sort of sticking out. We also, to neaten them off at the top, we had to make this bit that sort of hangs over the top. That's where all of the tops of the split pins are all underneath here. But obviously you couldn't stick it directly to those because that would prevent them from turning properly if you stuck it on both sides. So it's stuck to one side and then folded over yeah. just to finish them off. Yeah, and that hides all of the, the sort of the little bits of the mechanism and the stuff where the split pins are twisting round. So it just makes it look nice and neat. I mean, if you look at any of the cosplaying stuff, then you'll see that I mean, some of them are incredible. They've spray painted them. They've done all sorts of things. These are actually, they're meant to be quite simple. They were meant to be made of paper and look look like paper. So we didn't go any further than covering them with coloured pieces of paper mm -hmm. over the pizza box, which yeah. you could see on these, the Because these are just made of pizza box card yeah. with coloured paper or coloured card then stuck on top of yeah, it. Yes, paper, in fact, because the card would be too thick. Mm. They would have... Um, into each other. So uh, yeah, so I mean aesthetically then they, they fit in with all of the rest of the puppets which are all made of paper and card and it all looks looks appropriate. I suppose the only other thing that's probably worth mentioning then now is that if we were to... I could put them back. Oh, I could put them back, <laughs> yeah, I don't just have to hold them there. If... Well, maybe it's worth sort of showing them back when you're mentioning about the what we would do in ad addition. If, if we were to uh, have to use this for a show, 
um, as in a theatre show rather than film. I don't know whether we would worry about covering the back, it would very much depend on what it was being used for. Mm -hmm. But what we would have had to do is work out a way to actually attach these physically to the puppet or to the performer, whoever was wearing them and work out a way that they could be opened by pulling a string or whatever it might have been yeah. independently. Because these are for a video and we had a, a short amount of time to make them really, we decided it didn't matter. Those things didn't matter. We'll have someone out of shot pushing the wings up when they need to go up. Yeah. As Noel said earlier, they didn't really need to even smoothly go back down again. That wasn't part of what they're, what they're needed for. So the puppeteer effectively will be hidden by the puppet and they'll be able to open the wings from behind without anyone yeah, seeing Yeah, well, we'll them. use another puppeteer, I think, to open the wings. But, um, so it, it was that there are things that we would take further were we to make them for theatre. Yeah. And we do like the idea of the mechanism, so we may well use it in something in the future and take it to the next stage. Yeah. I think that is really, you know, it's a, it's, again, it's a really important principle generally, is that you, um, especially where you're working with something that's time sensitive, and we, you know, we only had a certain amount yeah, of time, time to get everything deadline. ready, you don't make extra work for yourself. No. Think about how it's going to be used. Think about what it needs to do, as we keep saying, and uh, make sure it does that job well. Exactly. But then the rest of it there, we didn't need to worry about how to fix it onto the puppet. We didn't need to worry about covering everything at the back because we knew it wasn't going to be seen. So there you are. If you want to give it a go, do. <laughs> yeah, if I, if I can uh, find a couple of good examples of some of the sort of cosplay ones that I mentioned, I'll try and pop them in the description down below, if I can. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching again. Uh, as always, do leave us a comment, like, subscribe, all of those sorts of things. And uh, next week we will be back again, having done our filming and everything, and having moved back to work on Gulliver. Mm. So we'll talk about that uh, next time. Thanks.